بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا وكرة عيوننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا أسأل الله تعالى أن يجعل نياتنا خالصة لوجهه الكريم السلام عليكم my dearest brothers and sisters and welcome I start with the name of Allah. I thank Allah for the greatest of all blessings, the blessing of Islam. I ask Allah to raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his Muslim family and companions, and to protect the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from that which he, the Prophet, feared for it. I ask Allah to grant us the sincerest of intentions, the ability to understand and the reward in the hereafter. My dearest brothers and sisters, last week I spoke to you about the minor signs of the Day of Judgment and I started to talk briefly about the major signs. I mentioned a Dajjal and I mentioned that he is a man who is alive now and is imprisoned on an island. Now he is a great deceiver and liar. He will claim to be God. In today's episode, I will give further details about a Dajjal and continue to speak about rest of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. The companions, may Allah raise their ranks, ask Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasul Allah, wa ma lubthuhu fil ard? They asked the Prophet وسلم, for how long will a Dajjal stay on earth? The Prophet وسلم, mentioned that he would stay on this earth for 40 days. The first day would be like a year. The second day would be like a month. The third day would be like a week. And the rest of the days would be like our days. They then asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulallah, wa ma isra'uhu fil ard? O Prophet of Allah, how fast will a Dajjal move across the earth? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what means? He will move as fast as the rain clouds being driven by the winds. That is, he will move very fast, subhanAllah. Now, at the Jal, he will be a great deceiver and liar. And as part of his deception, he will bring with him two rivers. Now, one of these rivers would be of fire. He would tell the people to enter these rivers. Now, the one who enters the one that will be of fire, actually, it will be cool. And the one that appears like water, actually, it will be like fire. Subhanallah. A Dajjal will go around the world and he will tell people to come and follow him. He will say, I am Allah, I am God, I am your Lord. And those who will believe him, when he leaves, the rain will fall on their lands, their crops will flourish and their cows would be fat and the udders full of milk. He will go to other groups of people. And the other group will say, we will not believe in you. They will not answer his call. They will not believe that he is the Lord. He is God. These people will face a situation in that it will not rain. Their plants will not grow and neither flourish. And their cows would be thin and no milk in their udders. Subhanallah, a Dajjal would walk past ruined lands and he would say, bring forth your treasures. And the treasures would come out like bees that surround the queen, subhanallah. A Dajjal, when he will go close to al Madinah, the earth will shake to prevent him from entering. 
And when this would happen, then the hypocrites of Al Madina, those who claimed to be Muslims, they will leave Medina and, and the angels will prevent them from re entering Medina. SubhanAllah. It is at this time a man who is amongst the best of the people will come. And Ad Dajjal would strike him with her sword. He would strike him with a sword so strongly that he would split in two. He would split in two. And Ad Dajjal, what will he say to the followers of this man? He will say, Will you believe in me that I am your Lord? Will you have any doubt if I bring this man back to life that I am your Lord? And they will say, No, we will we'll not doubt. Ad Dajjal would come close to this man and this man would then be brought back to life and he would be smiling. Note, Ad Dajjal will do all of this by the power and will of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create an, an ability in Ad Dajjal to do these things and these will be tests for the people. These will be tests for the people. Now this pious man, when he is brought back to life, he will say, I am now even more certain that you are the imposter. Then a Dajjal will try to kill him a second time, but he will not be able to. For Allah will place around his neck some brass which will prevent a Dajjal killing him. And this man will say, look, a Dajjal cannot kill me, subhanAllah. At some stage, a Dajjal will besiege the Muslims in Al-Quds, in Jerusalem. Whilst being besieged by a Dajjal, the Muslims will experience severe hardship. They would experience severe hunger. They would not have any food. What would nourish them and give them energy is the dhikr of Allah. That is by mentioning Allah, his name, they would, they would get energy and strength, subhanAllah. Now, it is at this time that Al-Masih, Isa alayhi salam, would descend from the second sky. He will come down with two hands resting upon the wings of two angels, subhanAllah. Now the descent of Isa alayhi salam is one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. Isa alayhi salam is alive now and he is in the second sky. As narrated by Al-Hafidh Al-Bayhaqi in Al-Asma'u wa Sifat, with a complete chain of narrators, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yanzilu Isa ibn Maryam min as That is, Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam, will descend from the sky. He will descend from the sky. It is not that he will be born again, no. He will actually descend from the second sky. He will come to Jerusalem and he will enter it. And the Muslims would hear his voice and would say that this is a voice of a man who is not suffering the hardships that we are suffering. Subhanallah, and this will be at the time of the Fajr prayer. The Iqama will have been said. When the Muslims see Isa alayhi salam, they will ask him to lead the prayer. Isa alayhi salam will say no, for this will be an honor for their Imam. That is an affirmation that Prophet Isa alayhi salam will follow the rules revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Therefore, there is no negation of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in which he said as narrated by al-bukhari wa inni khatamun nabiyyina fala nabiyya ba'di which means and indeed i am the last of the prophets so there will be no prophet after me that is there will be no new prophet after prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam now, after Prophet Isa alayhi salam has prayed, he will go out 
and at the jal will see him at the jal will see him and he will run now isa alayhi salam would run after at the jal and they would get to a village which is known as lud and it is at the gate of this village that isa alayhi salam would kill at the jal subhanallah now after the descent of isa alayhi salam and before the day of judgment Isa alayhi salam would rule the world and Islam would spread would spread throughout the earth subhanallah as Hakim narrated that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said la yahbitanna Isa ibn Maryam hakaman adla wa imaman muqsita wa la yaslukanna fajjan hajjan aw mu'tamira ولا يأتين قبري حتى يسلم علي ولا أردن عليه. This means Jesus, the son of Mary, عليه السلام, will descend to earth as a ruler and a fair judge. He will perform al-hajj or umrah and will travel to visit my grave. That is the grave of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to salute me and I will return his salutation. Subhanallah. Now Isa alayhi salam when he descends, he will be at the age of 33 years and he would stay on this earth for 40 years. He would get married and he would have children and Islam would be spread throughout the whole earth. It is mentioned subhanallah that the Muslims would be so happy, they would have so much wealth, there would be so much abundance and prosperity subhanallah. After 40 years, Isa alayhi salam would die and he would be buried next to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now amongst the major signs of the Day of Judgment is the emergence of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Now this refers to two tribes amongst the humans. They are humans and they are all blasphemers and they are huge in number. They exist now. There was a ruler who was a wali by the name of Dhul Qarnayn. He built a wall to surround them, to prevent them from escaping and harming others. Now before the Day of Judgment, they will dig, they will make a hole and escape. They will escape causing damage and destruction to wherever they go. And this will happen sometime after the descent of Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal to Isa alayhi salam to go with the Muslims to Mount Attur. Allah will reveal to Prophet Isa alayhi salam that I have brought forth people that no one has hands to fight, which means that no one will have the ability to fight them. Subhanallah. Now this above hadith, it means, this hadith means that Prophet Isa alayhi salam will receive a revelation informing him what to do at, the, at this instance. However, it does not mean it does not mean that he will receive the revelation of a new set of rules. Now after Ya'juj and Ma'juj appear, they will go to a lake known as Tiberius and they will be so huge in number that they will drink from this lake. And when the last of them gets there, there will be no water left. It will be said there used to be water here. Just indicating the enormity of their number it has been narrated that one of them will not die until he sees 1000 of his own offspring subhanallah now the muslims will not fight them the muslims will not fight them but instead they will take refuge on the mountain and they will fortify themselves and again subhanallah the Muslims will find themselves in a difficult situation. They will not have much food. 
And at this point, Isa alayhi salam, along with the other Muslims, would make dua to Allah. He would pray to Allah. And Allah Ta'ala would send upon Ya'juj and Ma'juj a disease. A disease which would kill them all like one person. That is, they would all die at one point in time. Subhanallah. Then Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, along with the rest of the Muslims, will come down from this mountain and they will find the earth littered with the corpses of Ya'juj and Ma'juj and they would have an awful and her a horrendous stench. Subhanallah. Again, Isa alayhi salam would make dua to Allah. And Allah Ta'ala would send down birds with long necks that would pick up these corpses and take them elsewhere, subhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala would send down a heavy rain and this rain, subhanAllah, would reach all of earth. There would not be a single hand span where this rain has not reached, subhanAllah. And there would be many blessings. This rain, subhanAllah, would wash away all the traces of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, ridding the earth of all blasphemy, subhanAllah. This rain will also cause the earth to bring forth its crops, subhanAllah, to the point that a pomegranate would be so big that people could eat from it and its skin, they could use it as their shelter, subhanAllah. A sheep would feed so many people. It is mentioned that a camel would be enough for a whole tribe. That is, Allah Ta'ala would bless the crops and the animals and the fruits of the Muslims, subhanAllah. There would be blessings in these crops, in the fruits and in the animals. The earth will give out its treasures to the point a Muslim would walk past gold and he would not be interested in it. He would walk past jewels and he would not be interested in it. Two rak'ahs to this Muslim would be more, would mean so much more than the wealth of this entire world, subhanAllah. Then after a point in time, Isa alayhi salam would die and he would be buried next to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Amongst the major signs of the Day of Judgment is the rising of the sun from the west, subhanAllah. One day, people would go out and wonder why the sun is late to rise. They would go outside looking in the east to try and see what's happened to the sun and the sun would rise from the west. It is on this day that another major sign of the Day of Judgment would occur, which is the appearance of Da'batul Ard, which literally means the beast of the earth. Now this beast is a creation of Allah, and it is mentioned in Surah An-Naml. This beast, what would he do? He would stamp upon the non-Muslims the word Gafi. And upon the Muslims, he would put some kind of sign like Mu'min would be written. SubhanAllah, to the extent that one of them would say to the other one, O oh, Kafir, and the other one would say, O oh, Mu'min. It is after this day that the gates of repentance would be closed, SubhanAllah. And no one will be able to escape from this animal, Dabatul Ard, from this beast. After the appearance of Dabatul Ard, there will be an appearance of smoke. Now it is mentioned in Surah Al-Dukhan, Surah 44. This smoke will appear and it will spread all over the earth. It will be thick and dense and it will affect both the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Enter through their noses and exit through their ears and it would cause a severe pain. As for the Muslims, they would just experience something like a cold, subhanAllah. And then the three khusafat. This is the collapsing of the earth in three places. The earth will shake and crack and it would collapse 
and take and swallow with it whatever is on the earth, subhanAllah. And the last of the major signs is the emergence of the fire from Ka'bi Adan. Now Adan is a port city in the southwest of Yemen that is said to lie actually in a crater of an extinct volcano. Now this fire will spread slowly towards a western direction. People will run away from it and it will go behind them. The people will then be gathered to their place of assembly. Subhanallah. In summary, there are 10 major signs before the Day of Judgment and all of these have been confirmed in a hadith narrated by Muslim from the root of Hudayfa, in which the Prophet said, this literally means that the Prophet said, Indeed, the hour will not come except before people will have seen the ten signs. The smoke, the imposter at the jal, the beast, the rising of the sun from the west, the descent of Isa alayhi salam, the appearance of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, the earth collapsing in three places, in the east, in the west, and in Arabia, and a fire that would burn forth from Yemen, subhanAllah. Before this or after this, there will be a nice wind that will come and it will cause the death of all the believers, subhanAllah. It will pass under the armpits and they will all die, but only kuffar will remain. They will remain on earth for approximately 100 years. And it is after then that angel Israfil will blow the horn. On blowing the horn the first time, all those in the earth and the skies, even the angels will die. Forty years will pass and he will blow the horn a second time. And then people will come back to life again. People will go towards the place that they will be held to account. Subhanallah for the day of judgment. This is a day when no one will be able to escape, subhanAllah. And every person will see what they benefited from this life and what they last. May Allah grant us a good ending and may Allah enable us to be amongst the winners on that day. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.